Hello everyone and welcome back to the series where I talk about some trivia on the Japanese culture or language and some nuances that were lost in the translation from the Japanese audio to the English subtitles of the episode of an anime, in this case the ninth episode of Chainsaw Man. Small nuance here that you could already figure out with some dialogue from the previous episode with the Fox Devil, but I thought that I might as well mention more things than less, in case there's people that still find it interesting. When Sawatali tells the Snake Devil to leave, she says Kylie to mean that it can return where it's from, suggesting that like with the Fox Devil being from Kyoto, they exist somewhere else and are being summoned. In the scene where Denji is getting dragged to the car, there's a Japanese expression said by the guy that was trying to carry him that I found interesting when talking about freaking out. Tenpadu. This expression comes directly from the term tenpai, which is used in Mahjong to refer to a hand that is only missing one tile to be complete. It reflects the feeling that you have of freaking out when you are so close to finishing something. Another small one, but when Tendo explains why her and Kurose are also blindfolded because they are not allowed to know about Nakama's contract, in the subs it's written in the plural form, and it's probably the case that she have a bunch of them, but I just wanted to point out in case it becomes relevant that in Japanese it's not necessarily plural. It's one of the parts clothing in the Japanese language that it's not always explicit if something is singular or plural. In the last line from the episode, in the English sum, Makima says the dining in Tokyo is to die for, but it's not exactly what she says. She only says something like, that's a shame, even though there's a lot of delicious restaurants in Tokyo. I usually try to not insert any opinions that I have in those videos, since it's mainly for sharing some informations, but with this one, I'm really not sure how I feel about it. There's always gonna be some creativity decision made while translating something to add a bit of personality in the dialogue, and I really don't mind that, since there's a lot of ways in Japanese to add nuances to a character by how they talk, Deji and Power being perfect examples for that. But I think that this line can be the type of lines that can affect how people view the image of a character. I'm an anime only watcher, so it might actually fit her character in the story overall, but to me, in my opinion, it feels a bit out of the character. We also got a couple of new characters names in this episode, so I thought that I could also talk a bit about them. Japanese names can often contain meaning behind them, especially with fictional characters that are created with a specific personality or goal in mind. This is the kind of things that you just can't really translate into English, so I thought it would be interesting to include. Quick disclaimer, names doesn't always mean something, and kanji can have multiple meanings, so this is just my take on them for the fun of it. Sawatari is written with swamp in transit, it might link a bit to the snake devil that she makes transit from a swamp location. Tendo is heavens and juvenile. It can also be a word to describe gods disguised as children, cherub. And Kurose is written with the color black and rapids. That's all for this episode. If you want more content like this, you know what to do. Like the video to let me and YouTube know if you want more of those type of videos. Comment about the thing that you found the most interesting or surprising. And of course, subscribe if you want to have more chance seeing when I upload more stuff. Anyway, it's the end of this video and I'll see you next week.